Hey, Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide. And... and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. you guys with a brand new let's play today we're starting spyro the reunited trilogy for the xbox one also on the ps4 the nintendo switch and pc i believe both steam and epic so we are going to be starting in a game i've just i just replayed this game so many times it's only taken me 12 hours to do all of that which is really sad We'll be doing on number three, and we'll be starting with Spyro the Dragon. Each of these will be in a combined playlist as well as solo playlists. So, without further ado, let's dive into the first game. In the World of Dragons. Okay, rolling! Uh, uh, oh! Uh, it's been peaceful here in the Five Worlds, or is it six? <laughs> For a Dragon's Age, we now have 12,000 treasure, or is it 14,000? What about this Ganasty Ganok character? Now, I understand he's found a magic spell to turn gems into warriors for his cause. I'll take that question. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Simple? He has been contained in a remote world and is no threat to the Dragon Kingdom. No threat? Besides, he is ugly. Ugly? That does it! Huh? Looks like I've got some things to do. <laughs> and there we have it guys the plot for spiral one still better plot than a hero's tale and i guess technically better than um uh enter the dragon plot but there's a few things i want to do i want to do this simply because i it's better for making thumbnails also Oh my god, I just realized the camera, when you go left, it goes left. When it goes right, it goes right. Oh yeah, I have Retro Spyro on. Um, don't ask me why. I just have Retro Spyro. Um, let me, uh, let me just pause the video so I can turn that off so you guys can actually see Spyro in all its glory. Because we want to play it as Reignited. Alrighty, so I am back after changing Spyro back. So this is what he's supposed to look like in the, uh, Reignited trilogy. So... Yeah, he looks way, way, way better. Also, I was messing with the audio settings and stuff to make sure everything was working. So, uh, the controls, the right analog stick is to move the camera in whatever direction you want it to move. The right, or left analog stick is to move. If you press the right bumper and left bumper, it goes in the respective direction. Squares to charge, circles to flame, triangles to go into first person and look around. It locks in in this game instead of just holding it down, which is both good and bad. It's kind of cool for getting some good looks at the scenery uh if you like i said x is to jump and then if you press it again you can glide and then if you press triangle you'll drop down in the sequels you actually hover like you do in my enter the dragonfly playthrough um the i guess i forget what they call it the share button i think i don't know what you call it it's the one with the dual squares on the xbox controller it opens up the guidebook so there's a th 100 gems and 4 dragons, there's also skill points, we will be getting them all, like reach the tricky platform and stuff, I'll be going through them all once we get to those levels. Um, as for that, I think we've went over everything, and then start, or I guess in this case the pause menu is just that. So, I guess first things first, we'll get this dragon, and see what he's up to. We have Nestor. Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Free ten dragons in the artisan world, then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next world. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. That's all I can tell you. 
Now, if you guys actually remember from my Hero's Tale playthrough, he's actually one of the elders that they put in there. And you can flame enemies to kill them, they do drop gems. Spyro 2, I believe, is the only Spyro game in history to not have um, enemies drop gems. They drop spirit particles, which are used to power things up. But we'll get into that once we actually get to the game. These chests are worth lives. Uh, you start off with 5, which is technically 6, and now we have technically 7. It's kind of like, you know, those games that... Uh... Also, funny thing is, now this is a, f a feature in all the Spyro games, except in Spyro 3 you actually have to earn it, but if you hold down both... Or, wait, I guess it's just technically, you only have to press 1. If you press in the left analog stick, it'll point you to the missing gems. Now, in Spyro 3, we normally unlock it for beating the Sparks levels, like every time you beat it, uh, beat a Sparks level, you get a power-up. But they remove that in this game. They only give you, I think, two out of four power-ups, the rest are just naturally in the game. And this is... it's weird that they did that. Now remember, bigger enemies have to be flamed. I don't think this guy counts as a big enemy. No, he doesn't count as a big enemy. He is a small enemy. But he feels like he's a big enemy. We'll also be doing the levels in order of where they're supposed to be. Or, like, where they are on the guidebook. So, speedways will always be the last level and stuff like that. Home worlds will obviously be first. And we'll be 100%ing all three games. So we have Delvin. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torture! Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first. Do you know what the dragonfly following you is doing? Uh... His name is Sparks, and he's helping and protecting you. Keep an eye on him and see what I mean. Oh yeah, that leads us to another thing. I don't know if I've explained it in every Spire game, but gold means you're full health, blue means you lost a health, green means you lost two health, no Sparks means you're one hit from death. So, yeah, that's a thing. And that's all you really need to know about that. Please use the flame cards in their baskets. They only appear in this game. Once Spyro 2 hits, it pretty much created the ground for all future Spyro games that played like the main ones. Uh, the Legend of the Spyro series, like I said, is a little different. Hero's Tale kind of broke the mold. They had a lot of similar things, though. They had like chests that you couldn't flame, and things you could only supercharge or use fireworks with, and stuff like that. Anyways, we have Aureus. Cool flash! Do that again! The artisan's boss is through a portal in the dragon mouth. But you are not yet ready, Spyro. First, you must complete one of the other artisan lands. Okay, so that requires us, like, let's say this is level one, right? So it requires us to beat Stonehill, then we can go to that boss. Bosses in this game are weird because they're actual levels with gems. They're not just bosses. Not like Spyro 2, 3. Enter the Dragonfly, Hero's Tale, the Game Boy games, yada yada yada. This is the only Spyro game where the bosses actually, you know, you know, actually have levels. And this is Thomas, one of the other elders from A Hero's Tale. Hey Spyro, press the jump button twice to glide. And, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Oh, that. And then we have all dragons. So yeah, you'll get a notification when you get all the collectibles in a level, which is super nice. But most Spyro games have done that. I don't remember if the original Spyro one did or not. I tried recording it, and it was going fine and all, but it just... The quality looks so bad when you, you record from a PS3. And then on top of that, uh, another issue I had was recording PS3 games. The quality gets like knocked down to like half of what it's supposed to be. Like it should be able to record in whatever resolution that the PS3 game was naturally in, right? But for whatever reason, my like hardware that I used to capture stuff on my PlayStation 3 has been bugging out and recording in like half the quality. So you'll be getting like 480p instead of 1080p or even like 720. Like I'd be fine with 720 if that's you know. But I needed. How the heck did I miss a single gem? Well, anyways, this isn't the first level, so we gotta go back anyway, but. Oh yeah, I forgot. Luckily, we have the ability to track. Wait. 
Did I really miss it over here? Oh, I did too. And there you go, 100 gems. And I do believe it will save 100% level complete. So that means we can go to Stone Hill, the very first level of this uh, home world. Yeah, and unlike other Spyro games, home worlds have enemies. Every other Spyro game that has a home world other than a hero's tale, but like I said, that breaks the mold of the whole Spyro series. That game, or um, most games don't have enemies in the home world. This game does, because it's more like an invasion than anything. Also, I don't remember the loading time for this level being this long. Like, let's be real. I might actually have to cut out the loading times. For some reason, like, Crash Bandicoot's, like, near instant, so you don't even get time to read the tips half the time. But in this game, yeah, that's, that's not the case. Though, trust me, Switch version is a thousand times worse. Anyways, we have 200 gems, 4 dragons, and looks to be an egg. We also have Burn the Hidden Pink Tulip. Which, I remember where it is, but at the same time, I don't remember where it is. It, it happens every time I play this. I always find it, but it's just one of those ones that I kind of, like, forget. I think that's kind of funny. But yeah, there's multiple pathways you can go. This way here just leads to a dragon and some gems, so no harm in taking this pathway. Also, all the dragons, other than one, are kind of in the same zone. They're all kind of, like, here. These ones you have to charge. I'll show you, if I find them again, what happens if you try and flame them. But if you play Spark before, you'll know. And we have Lindar. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're saving your progress. That could be useful if you run into trouble. Not that you ever run into trouble, Spyro. How do you know? Also, I'm so used to the active camera now on the uh, PS2 games that playing with an actual controllable camera just feels really weird. It really legitimately does. So I kind of like how those chests there with the lives have like scales on them that kind of resemble the fact that they are for Spyro. Also in this game water hurts you, so don't step in that water no matter how pretty it looks and you know how beautiful the render distance is. Oh yeah, when them they just turn red. <laughs> oh, excuse me. These are used to unlock lock chests. Those only appear in Spyro 1 and 3, not Spyro 2. For whatever reason. Anyways, we already have our second dragon here, which goes by the name of Aster. Oh yeah, he's one of the elders. I think. After you've freed all the dragons, pass through this fancy vortex uh, thingamajigger. It'll take you back to the artisan home. But first, let me tell you a story. No thanks. See ya! See what I mean? Like, I know I mentioned it in one of my other videos, like, from a different series, where Tom Kenny doesn't really fit the role of Spyro in Spyro 1. Like, he was fine in 2 and 3, because he was already a teenager and was meant to be sassy and everything. But this game, it just feels forced, and it doesn't feel natural. And then you got a chest, which only had her half gems, and usually a good portion. And we have Gavin. Watch the dragonfly, Spyro. His color indicates his power. When he eats butterflies, he stays strong. Like me. Uh, sure. Okay, Mr. Van Hout Coffee Guy. That's nice to know. Um, I, I, See, all the dragons always stand on their hind legs. I wonder why Spyro doesn't. Like, is it because he's not mature? Oh yeah, that nan and a nan that you can hear in the background. Yeah, that's an egg thief, and egg thieves are the only way to actually get eggs in this game. Now remember my uh, uh, Hero's Tale playthrough, I said these shepherds and the sheep? Yeah, this is the level they're from. The shepherds, though, do appear in two levels. They're not just in one level, but they are only in one level in Hero's Tale. And we'll see how far we can go without taking damage. Normally I take dumb damage just because I'm trying to like rush through something in this game. I used to be able to actually speed run this game with up to 100% really, really easily. And Spyro 3 being the harder one, because if you miss a gem, you won't be able to track it until you actually beat the game. So, yeah, it's a little more difficult to speed run that one. On this game, though, it's super easy to speed run it. We have Gildas, the last dragon here. 
Spyro, my friend. How about a hint on gliding? You bet. For the longest glide, press the jump button at the top of your jump and try pressing the action button to drop down mid-flight. Yeah, so the action button, they, they gener generalized it. They um, generalized it to, you know, just the whatever console you're on. So they say the action button. Action button's Y. Don't know why Y is, or like Y and triangle and I think X on the switch. I can't remember which button is at the top. Why those are considered the action buttons over literally any other control. But, you know, it's just the way the game works. Also, this, these things indicate an invisible barrier. So you can't actually break the level or anything. Well, you can break this game. Well, apparently, a lot of people have found a lot of glitches throughout this game. But personally, I have never once found any glitches like this. Apparently, like an infinite roll glitch and graphical glitches. The only glitches I found were ones where, like, sparks won't pick up gems properly, so Spyro has to go and physically step on them. Which is not a game-breaking bug, it's just an annoying bug, but nothing game-breaking. And then we have this thief over here, and I believe that's where the tulip was, too. One thing, though, that the Reunite Trilogy did differently than the originals is they actually made the egg thieves a good 20% or more difficult. Like, Normally we would have already been caught up to this guy, but for some reason they really fucked up their speed for whatever reason. I'm not gonna complain. This is kind of weird that they did that. Now uh, the tulip, I believe, is uh, where's the gate? There it is. And then the last gem looks like it's over it's behind this. Oh, it's right there. Oh. And a good habit to get into, especially since the end of the game you'll need to do this, because the end of the game has very specific ways to be leveled, is you want to go to the Return Home Portal. And this will allow you to then, you know, show off your collectibles, but also saves your game. And once you reach the final world, though, they actually require you to go through those things. Why did that load so fast compared to going into that level? Weird. Anyways, uh, we'll do one more level in this episode. Dark Hollow, my personal favorite level in this uh, home world. I'll be telling you guys each of my favorite levels and least favorite levels in each home world. Um, I don't really have a least favorite level, and I normally won't include speedways, but I'll include the speedway for this one because not only is the speedway kind of lame here, it's like really the only boring or bad level I can think of. Alright, here we are in the nighttime sky. Uh, Dark Hollow. So these enemies are kind of weird, right? So you can't flame them when their shield's up. But if you get them while they're turned around or their shield is down, you can actually flame them. It's kind of a weird predicament that those guys are in. And the big enemies... See, you can flame them. Um, the big enemies, though, you do have to flame. I did mention that before. There is no skill point here. Also, the tips that this game gives you from the dragons are usually really delayed. Because, for example, the guy who tells you about the big enemies, I believe is the very last dragon here. Also, we only have three dragons and 100 gems. It's definitely the smallest of the levels we've been to so far. Now, to beat these guys, these big, ugly narcs, I'm pretty sure are the biggest enemies in all of Spyro. They have to turn around to... You know, show off their butt, but they actually have like flying cloths, making them seem a little more realistic than a hero's tale with the whole boxer short show thing. No idea why the game did that. That's just stupid, and they tried the, the humor part way too hard. But anyways, we have our first dragon, Oswald. Psst, Spyro, wanna know a secret? Use the action button when you wanna zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. Ah oh, yes, that's so much of a secret. I've already told you guys how to do that. Also, we have another key for that chest that we seen at the very beginning of the level. Also, this... I, I don't know, like, this game... Honestly, the remake is kind of weird, because the quality went downhill every game. So, Spyro 1 started off really, really good. And then Spyro 2 was, was good. But Spyro 3, the, the baby dragons just didn't have, like, any personality anymore, including ones that were solely unique in the original. The sad part is this game was rushed, and Spyro 3 took the brunt of it. 
because man, oh man, do games get rushed nowadays. They take so many resources, they're expensive to make. And it's just, oh man, that's why like indie companies with like pixel graphics and stuff do so well. Because if a person likes the game, right, they can make a ton of money off of it without breaking the bank. A game like this, where you need to really do beautiful graphics, it can get expensive. Now they have Alpha. Oh, it's you. I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Their metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Alright. Then they have one more dragon to go. There were no dragon eggs here, so... Yeah, there are also achievements if you haven't gotten them on this game. I'm not gonna go to those because the Switch version doesn't have them, and I don't remember every single one. I remember most of them. <clears throat> because I did beat this game on literally every platform. I own it on every platform. I got it for, I think, 10 bucks on Xbox, for free on PC. Um, Switch, it was on some kind of sale too. The only game that I actually paid for it on was, like, full price was on the PS4. But that was when I first came out. I, don't, I haven't had a PS4 in years. Otherwise, I'd probably record PS4 games too. But there's not very many that I record over this, because I'm playing this on the Series SX for Xbox, which is better than the PS4. I'm not saying it has more games or better games, I'm just saying that it's physically better. And there's all 100 gems, and we have the last dragon, Darius. Big enemies like this Nork with the club cannot be charged, but a quick flame, that should defeat them. And see what I already said about him being way out of place? Most of the time you're gonna kill the enemy before you come for the dragon, so I, I don't I don't get it. Anyways, we can return home and I think that'll do it for this episode. I do want to see how big these file sizes are though before I keep recording. Because I want to at least record a week's worth of videos. So yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out and see how big everything is, how well all the sound and stuff is, and everything like that. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Uh, if you check the description, you will see the link to Patreon and the Discord below. You can talk about games on the uh, Discord. It's mainly Pokemon stuff right now, but we could we do have a channel for gaming, we do have a channel for Pokemon, we have a channel for Yu-Gi-Oh, and then we have a talk channel. So if you guys are excited for that. Do that. Also the Patreon, you guys can buy which Let's Play you guys want to see next. Bye bye. Have a wonderful day.